you, Zimbabwe, for tuning into yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agriculture on New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. And my name is Udzanae Manure. Today we are going to be looking at citrus production here in Zimbabwe. We are looking at efforts that the government is making, speaking to our farming community in terms of diversification. If you are a wise farmer or you aspire to be a wise farmer, you should make sure that not a month goes by without you having something that you send to the market. In this case here at Pepsi Farm, they do have a range of citrus fruits. We are looking at the grapefruit. This is the big one here, right here. We also have some oranges that they are already harvesting. They have already matured. We also have some lemons, the light yellow lemons. And we also have some lime, the ones that I'm holding, that I'm carrying right now. We also do have some natchez, though they've been exhausted due to selling and marketing. The season is over. So like I've alluded to earlier, we're going to be looking at citrus production here in Zimbabwe. And we have taken Pepsi Farm as our case study today, where they are producing a range of citrus fruits. Stay tuned. <laughs> At this point in time, we have taken the liberty of inviting the owner here at Pepsi Farm, Mrs. Sam Zimu. Amai Sam Zimu, thank you for inviting us and giving us time to come to your farm today. Thank you very much, Waza, for visiting us at Pepsi Farm. You are very much welcome to come here anytime. Now, my Sam Zimu, as we get into our discussion, I was enlightening our audience there at home right before we started that we have grapefruit, we have some natchez, we have some lemons, we also have lime fruit. Can you talk to us in terms of a brief synopsis, a brief background of this enterprise? When did it start? The hectares, the land, the area, and how generally are you managing this enterprise? Wow. Thank you, Wadza. Um, when we started putting up this orchard, we had um, three, four hectares of land. On this uh, three hectares of land, we couldn't put any other crops here. As you can see, the whole farm is um, occupied with our, our commercial crops, but on this area here, we couldn't put any other crops. So we managed to put an orchard after consulting a few people. And uh, this orchard, we decided to put citrus because it's very good for our area here in Goromonzi. So why we've put citrus up is because uh, sometimes uh, we get uh, ground frost in this area and the frost can actually heat some fruits like mangoes and avocados. So citrus was the best uh, fruit for us here. As we move right along, I was tasting your oranges. They are very tasty and juicy, I must say. I want Thank us you. to talk about your objectives. What were you aiming at achieving when you brought the idea of having an orchard? I understand you're also into livestock production. Yes. You have wheat, you have cattle, you have sheep, but now you also have a mushroom setup where your girls are working, but still you managed to establish a beautiful orchard with a range of citrus fruits. What were your objectives aligning it to this orchard? We have um, many enterprises, as you've mentioned. We also have a section where we are putting up um, horticulture. And when we started putting up horticulture, we had a section where we put in butternuts. So we had a lot of bees around and when we had the bees around because of um, butternuts, we thought, this is too many bees. And someone says, no, you don't even have enough bees for your uh, butternuts. You need more bees than this. So we put up some uh, uh, beehives that you didn't know. We put up some beehives. And when we had the beehives here, we had so many bees around. And then we said, OK, that orchard was a good idea. Then we put in this orchard. So from this orchard, we are getting honey uh, from the beehives. We are also getting the bees pollinating our butternut in the horticulture program. So we actually want to make sure that uh, every crop here, uh, what we are doing is complementing each other. So that's what we are actually doing. And we actually hope to expand and actually complementing each crop with, um, with another. I think that's, that's clear enough. I hope it is. No, you are a female farmer. Most people, when they look at this episode or your enterprises here at the farm, they would think maybe it's our male counterparts. It's a male, it's the father maybe who's working and moving around. But when we arrived, we saw you, you were busy in your work suit, meaning that you are hands-on working at this farm. 
Can we talk about those skills that you look at when you are employing someone, especially to the orchard side, and even some of the organizations that have come on board to ensure that you are producing fruits that are marketable and that the uh, market expects or wants? Can we talk to us in terms of skill acquisition or retention here at your farm and also the organizations and institutions that you're working with to ensure that your enterprise is a success? Thank you, Adzi. We do a lot of consulting here. We don't have a skilled person per se who is manning the orchard, but we consult a lot. So after consulting uh, in terms of um, growing the orchard and marketing of the produce, we then ended up with ZimTrade who has done a wonderful job for us and uh, they've introduced us to markets and they are also giving us expertise regarding mining our orchard so that we can actually even produce export uh, pro uh, fruits for our, our, our program. Okay, yeah. thank you so much for such a detailed presentation. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned. Thank you viewers for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. Today we are looking at citrus production here in Zimbabwe and we have taken the liberty of inviting Amai Sam Zimu who is the owner here at Pepsi Farm. They are producing oranges, grapefruit, lime fruit, lemons, natchez, amongst other crops and other enterprises that they already have here at their farm. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer, Wazanai Manure. It's on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanai. Make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also now available on Twitter where most of these discussions take place it's at agribusiness 110 now earlier on before into the break Amai Sam Zim here was telling us of the various organizations that they are working with she also enlightened us in terms of how she is managing in the nitty-gritties of how maybe they started this orchard my Sam Zim we are here in the second segment welcome back thank you now, this segment, we reserved it a bit for technical uh, advice and technical support of how you are managing this citrus enterprise. Can you talk to us in terms of your fertilizer application? You'd find that in every cropping venture or even in livestock, you're going to need some inputs to sustain your enterprise. In terms of fertilizers, what are you using? What are your application regimen? Do you do it weekly, seasonally? What is it like? Well, first of all, we start off with the planting stage, Waza. When we planted this, we put in some manure mm -hmm. and we put in some basal fertilizers. When we are then managing the crop, we then came in with some uh, top dressing fertilizers and we also used some foliar fertilizers. So for that, we were just wanting to make sure we are managing the growth of the trees. And after managing the growth, now we're then managing the uh, out output of the tree. Yes. which is now giving us the fruit. So it, when it starts giving us the fruit, we then need to manage um, the pests. Mm -hmm. So when we are managing the pests, we want to make sure that when we harvest, our fruits do not have any pests uh, that have affected the inside. You, sometimes you find when you buy an orange or when you, when you get an infected orange or, 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 or fruit, you find that um, after peeling it, after opening it up, you meet up with a moth or, yes. or, or, or something else in there, which is not pleasant for someone who spent their money and they, they want to enjoy their fruit. So we manage it up to that stage, making sure we are putting in the right chemicals, the right fertilizers, and um, managing the crop properly. Okay. Mm. My son, Zima, I want us to talk about issues surrounding irrigation. We mm. spoke of fertilizer. Now, these are citrus fruits, mm. meaning that well over around 90% of them is water. You're going to need a robust irrigation system. Mm. In terms of irrigation, how are you managing? I can tell from where we are standing that your trees, you have created sort of like a basin yes. that holds water. Yes. You are obviously irrigating your fruits. I was tasting them. They are very juicy and they are very tasty, meaning that you do have a robust irrigation system. Mm. Even your plant in future maybe you'd want to improve on your irrigation system can you talk to us in terms of your water application regimen yes sure uh, I'll go back to planting as well when we established the orchard we did put in some uh, drip irrigation 
So that drip irrigation was um, good enough for when the plant was still very young. As the plant grew up to this stage here, mm -hmm. we were also upgrading our drip irrigation system to meet up with the demand of the tree. So that um, drip irrigation was good then, but we are also uh, supplementing uh, with um, the lateral pipes should need be if we don't get enough water through our tanks. Mm -hmm. So we always just want to make sure that our trees are well irrigated and um, they are not starved of water. My Samuzimi, you would find that generally in our farming community, some misconceptions whereby people say that cannot change a mutuem orange could you eat lemon uni memvura. We were talking about irrigation. Now some would say uka unimam vrama orange asha no buda ama lemon for status. Secondly, you would find that some people were saying would say that uh ma orange and you guta anako no fana kuyane sugar. Of sugar. This is what happens in our farming community. But I can tell you are very experienced, you are seasoned. It took years and seasons. Can you just address those misconceptions in a nutshell? What do you think? Is it true? Your sentiments on that? Ah, there is so many misconceptions around. But then what you need to do is a lot of these things come with experience. So for us to be at this stage where we are with these trees, it's been four years. So in the four years, we've been trying a lot of other things was to see what goes in some misconceptions we did take and some we didn't take. <laughs> so that's the truth about it. But what we are actually trying to do is to not take a lot of those misconceptions. Some of them can be very costly mm -hmm. on, 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 on the plant and some of them can be very costly from dipping into your pocket and not realizing anything on the fruit. So uh, we are just trying to work with what's in the book. We are looking at the book and then we're getting some expertise from those who've really grown citrus for a long time. Okay. So that's what we are doing. Okay. Yes. Now I want us to talk about issues surrounding pests and disease management. Mm. You did touch on it briefly where you were saying that you might end up finding some moths or worms penetrating yes. the shell and getting inside and residing inside. Yes. Then it will only be discovered after someone has already purchased the yes. fruit from you. But looking at your orchard is very clean. Mm. I didn't see any fruits that are on the ground, meaning yes. that you do not have some fall-offs. When it, yes. uh, a tree is infested by diseases or pests, mm. you would find that at times the basin would be filled with it's fallen been, fruits that are yeah. rotting. Can you sure. talk to us in terms of pests and diseases management mm. for starters? And generally, how are you keeping your orchard free from threats? We might have issues surrounding fires, yes. like the season that we are in. Yes. People often recklessly start mm. fires and they can yes. affect your orchard. Can you talk yeah. to us in terms of those threats, pests, diseases and fires? Sure. Um, in terms of fires, let's start off with uh, fires. Uh, we actually do a fire guard right around our orchard, mm -hmm. making sure that we do not have any grass going ra around the orchard. In case someone accidentally drops a, a fire, it will not spread to the orchard. We also have someone manning the orchard for, from morning to evening, every day. And this person who is manning the orchard now we are going into pests and diseases. Mm -hmm. They will be look, scouting around for pests and they'll be scouting around for diseases. So they will also be just taking a, a, a look and uh, taking care of the general uh, maintenance of the orchard, which will then even when there is any fire from any place, they would be able to pick that up. So as they're managing the um, orchard while they are checking for pests and diseases, we have some pests uh, on this grapefruit that I'm holding here. This was, was infected a little bit. Mm -hmm. We do have what is called the soft brown scale. So the soft brown scale um, can just uh, make the orange very dirty mm -hmm. and not look good if it's not managed in time. Some blemishes. In some blemishes. Oh, and it, okay. it will not be appealing to the customer. Yes. And also what this soft brown scale does is it saps on the juice of the fruit. So sometimes you'd find that the fruit is not juicy um, uh, because it's been sapped off the, the, the juice by this uh, soft brown scale. So we need to make sure that we really get rid of this soft brown scale. So I've picked up this one. It's not many of them like this, but when we start realizing something like this, we actually uh, quickly take a look at it and deal with it. And in terms of um, diseases, 
you do get um, some diseases, we actually go on a routine spray without realizing uh, any other problems. We go on a preventative uh, if, um, uh, before we get any problems. So we go on a preventative program where we do a routine spray. And then should we notice that uh, some trees are being affected, we then go in with a curative uh, program where we are going to cure for the diseases. Okay, thank you so much. That was very detailed. As we round off in a snippet, my clients say you, which fruits are they enjoying? We are in winter, I know people are coming for, for the lemon. And those yeah. that are often in the kitchen, one of my recipes, they also want lime. Uh, can we talk about uh, the market's favorite and even your personal favorite? This is your orchard. You do have a favorite or your children's <laughs> favorite as we close. Sure, true. Uh, my personal favorite is the grapefruit. Okay. I love this. This is the... This gives me a boost every morning. I have this for breakfast every day. And uh, my children, they love the nachis. My husband loves the uh, squeezed orange juice. Oh. So he has fresh orange juice every morning. So all from the farm. But we also have uh, markets um, that are picking up a, a few grapefruits. And uh, we have bars and restaurants which will order limes and lemons. Because our lemons here, uh, they are called Eureka lemons and they are the soft, uh, smooth skin. And uh, these ones are very popular with the restaurants and with the, um, with the shops. Okay. So th they love those. And the limes, the bars will take those. But um, the nachis and the oranges, the bulk of it will go to the uh, Mbari market, the shops, and uh, yeah, anyone who is interested in getting Thank you so much, Smaisa Mudzimu. There you had it, viewers. We were talking of oranges, citrus fruits in general production. She was enlightening us on the health maybe benefits that you might derive from the grapefruit. She is producing her own grapefruit and she is enjoying the fruit each and every morning. Her family does have some favorites like she highlighted. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. Thank you, viewers, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030. Today, we were looking here at citrus production here at Pepsi Farm, being owned by Amaisam Zimu. Amaisam Zimu, we are here in the final segment. Welcome back. Thank you, Mata. As we get into our discussion, Mama, you would find that there are people who would say that, ah, in Indigatenga or in Jiracho, the seed and the chas of and is the one that I'm going to be using to establish my orchard. We are looking at issues surrounding investment. Is it a long term investment? In terms of capital, is it patient capital? In terms of looking at maybe when do you expect to harvest? The period from establishment up to harvesting. What are we looking at? Looking at investment. Wow, thank you, Adza. Uh, we really want to enlighten people about. Kujara Muti as we take a good to a shipper, Munziako Yongo Chichka, Otto Boda Kunojara, especially Pagso, that would be a commercial production. Yes, it will not work like that. You need to invest, it's patient investment. You need to invest and buy proper meat from Banvaru Gona Shoku Chica Miti Ashunayui. Nukutiba Shamika Shokuti Miti is free of diseases. And when it's free of diseases, you are sure, sure of a good start. Mm -hmm. So when it's time for us to start harvesting, we are actually looking at, um, we start picking at around five years. So five years for us is um, a long time, especially when you've put in some money into it. That's why we've called it it's patient capital. We then start harvesting around that time up to probably, they say 20 years, you can still be harvesting. And this is a project that I really liked myself. And I thought this would take us into our pension age where we are going to be picking from these fruits. So we didn't want to hurry this capital. We wanted to make sure that this will take us through our pension age. Okay. Now, my son, Zimi, you would find that generally people are interested by near Zima markets. Once they've established their orchard, they want to know how soon am I going to be making money. Number one. Number two, what does the market expect from me? As we are standing here, we do have packages of oranges that you have packaged in this sex. You are also holding packages, uh, packets of lemons, lemons and, limes. and limes. In terms of market expectations, 
What are we looking at? What does the market expect? And as a producer, how are you working to ensure that the market is satisfied? You spoke of having restaurants as your clients, you spoke of Mbari, you spoke of even individuals that come in and purchase oranges. In terms of satisfying your market and the market expectations, let's talk about the nexus in between. Are you two in unison? Are you in agreement with your market? Well, for you to make money, and for you to be able to satisfy the person out there who is looking forward to buying your produce, you need to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you find that people are so health conscious and they do not want to have food which is uh, filled with chemicals and uh, fertilizers which will affect their health. So we are really trying to go very much organic here and we are trying to use uh, fertilizers, chemicals, which will then give us a good market for our produce you find that uh, some of the companies, especially when you want to export, they will be coming for a quality check. And that quality check, they will be wanting to know what sort of um, chemicals, fertilizers, which you used here, which uh, will probably be not allowed in their country. Mm -hmm. And when they check and they find that you have used the wrong chemicals and the wrong fertilizers, they will definitely not buy from you. So we also want to go in line with what the uh, market wants. So that's what we are trying to do giving the customer what they really want and we are working towards that to give them a good product. In terms of varieties that you have here, in terms of your grapefruit, your lemons, your lime or your oranges, in terms of varieties, can you maybe outline or highlight some of the varieties that you do have here? Is it a mixture or you're sticking to one variety? When it comes to orange production, you have this one variety. Lemons, you have this one variety. In terms of varieties, what is it like in your orchard? Yes, in terms of variety, we are trying to uh, have a mix because uh, people like different things. So we on the oranges we have the Washington Navel and the mandarins. And in terms of lemon we have the Eureka lemons which are the smooth skin ones. And in terms of um, lime we have the smooth skin lime. And in terms of the nachis, uh, which is not here in our plates, we also have the easy peel uh, Nachis, which is very um, uh, likable in the market. Okay. Yeah. You would find that to those who are watching, some are even in the diaspora, they have relatives in the diaspora who are looking to have my projects that they might want to invest in. Some might think, Kuti, this is a project whereby uh, it's quick cash, get in, get out. Advise our audience there at home, your sentiments, your word of advice in terms of establishing an orchard. What does it take? What you have come to learn as a farmer, you are telling us that from establishment up to harvesting, there is a five-year gap. And in those five years, when it's not like your word of advice, your sentiments to our audience there at home as we close. Well, I would like to say with every investment, you need to be very cautious. While you are being cautious, inv invest wisely. Get the right seed, get the right management. It's not quick money, it's not easy money, but if you do it right from the start, you will be able to realize your profits. So from those very good diaspora, while they are thinking, I'll go home in five years' time, it's better to start now. Mm -hmm. Put your fruit trees now, so that by the time you come home, you will be starting to pick your fruits. Thank you so much. Wise words from a seasoned farmer. My Samudzimu, it was a pleasure allowing us to hang out with you today. Thank you very much, Waza. Thank you for coming. From me, your host, Wazanae Manyore, I was enjoying oranges in this orchard as we were recording this episode. I'm also on Instagram, it's a W Manyore. And the crew behind the scenes, have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.